All right, so everyone should be seeing my screen in RAM concept. And we'll start off with our first topic here, or our first tip. And that was uh, changing your slab polygon. All right, so if you take a look at the left-hand side of my slab, you can see how I have approximated a nice curve to the slab here. And I've done that through segmenting or through different segments of the slab edge. So we're going to repeat that process here over to the right. You can see that that's just a nice right corner here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Well, when I select the slab, you're going to notice that I just have two nodes, one at each vertice of the slab polygon. That's going to make it a little bit difficult to try and get that nice curve shape that I'm after. So in older versions of Concept, my choices were very limited in how I could make this happen if I wanted to make this type of change at this point in the process. So now we have two new tools. One is the Add a Slab node, and then there's also a Delete node tool that are going to help us make very quick changes to the slab edge. So let's start by adding a couple of new nodes along the slab edge. So as I selected those two nodes, it knows that I want to go along this face of the slab edge. Go ahead and just put in three new nodes there. Now I can use one of my stretch or move commands to start manipulating the node location. So we'll just go, and I've already got some nice uh, user lines in here that let me know how I want to create this little sloping effect. So it looks like two nodes will do me just fine. Rather than try to figure out where to put that third node, it's not any use to me right now. We'll just go ahead and use the delete node command, and we'll go ahead and get rid of that. All right, so now we have a nice segmented curve approximation, and it should mirror what we see on the left-hand side. All right, that's time for tip number two, and that's going to be modeling clean design strips. All right, so I had a couple of things going on on this floor. And throughout this structure, I've used most of the automated tools to kind of get my spans and strips in place initially. <clears throat> and so it's not a perfect layout. So what we're after is just cleaning up the floor. I think that the biggest tip for modeling clean design strips is developing a critical eye when you automatically review the floor. So you want certain things to jump out at you as potential issues for your cross sections. Design strips are in place simply to facilitate gathering cross sections. The cross sections then take the force moment contours and resolve those down to design values so that detailing can happen for your slab. So the orientation of the cross sections, the location of the cross sections, do become critical. And there are many automated tools within Concept, as everyone knows, to you know, facilitate the layout. But now let's talk about, after that's happened, what we can do to make sure that we'll get a good design kind of right off the bat. So let's, let's zoom in to this opening area. So I have a series of beams modeled here. And the span above is what concept put in place for me. I modeled these spans kind of as a T-beam so that I'll have proper detailing for my beam members. So what I don't like about this slab is that it's going, or this strip here, is that it's going simply from column to column. And so the big red flag for me is at the beam location, I'm going to have a cross section. And that cross section is not going to be a, a simple T shape because of the beam framing in. So I really, when I want to think about my cross sections, I want to avoid putting a cross section in any supporting areas. That's why we automatically detect 
our columns and the cross sections are having happening at the face of column or some small distance away from the column. You really don't want to put a cross section right through, you know, a very deep member like that. So that's what we're looking to clean up here. I'll leave this one on the top end just for your comparison and on the bottom we'll begin to clean that up. What I what I have right now is two different bands have been put in place, but when, the, when it put it in place, it didn't detect anything on this beam, so it, it didn't automatically flag that the beam framing in is going to act as support. So really, this scenario is no better than the scenario at the top. So what we're going to do is utilize the properties for support edges here, and we'll go ahead and change the support information. All right, I believe I have an 18 inch wide beam there. So let's go ahead and enter that value and then I will regenerate the strip. Now you see that's going to pull this back to the face of the beam. So let's repeat this over here on the other side. All right, so now we have a, a design strip here where I'm happy with all the cross sections that I'll have in this section. They're all going to be nice T-beam cross sections. And then we can finish detailing the beam in this area also for T-beam sections. We'll leave the, the section with the other framing member in for the latitude design. Another issue to consider is when we did that, you'll notice that now I have an area of slab down here that may not have any cross section coverage. I'll have to think about this and how it may impact the design because when I have any area of slab that doesn't have cross-section coverage, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but detail, reinforcement detailing may not be applicable in this location. So spans are not just for definition between column lines. Spans can be placed anywhere on the floor to help facilitate the cross-sections. So let's place in another span here. Just use some of our snaps to make sure we get right in the right location. And then we can generate another strip. Now, what's happening here between the strips is it's going from center to center. Again, that's uh, there's no column or anything here, so it's just going from point A to point B. It's not automatically able to detect anything. So if I know my column dimensions, and I believe they were 20.16, you can simply, they don't have to be considered a support, you're simply pulling back where those cross sections are going to start. Right, now that's lining up and looking a lot better. Let's go to the situation that I have in the middle of the building where my columns change size and then their orientation changes. So in the upper strip, I have a wall, so I've got kind of continuity across the cross sections. Then I've got this wider column which everything is being pulled back farther. Then I jump down to a narrower column. And so if you take a look just kind of on the edge of the strip, it's just kind of going all over the place. Now, this is one of those areas that to me it might be a fussy detail. I like to clean this up, so I'm going to show you how to go ahead and do that today. Um, the reason why I like to clean this up is because I like to align my cross sections as much as possible. So when I look at this floor, I'm automatically flagging this polygon, this jagged polygon as, you know, a potential issue for my results. So by, again, using that same area of the properties to change the support dimension, we'll be able to kind of clean it up and force more alignment to our cross sections. Now, why is alignment to the cross section so important? Well, it's really going to help you with the mild reinforcement that's optimized by RAM concept for the slab. Within the mild uh, within any little jogs you might have or separate cross sections, additional detailing may be required at that location. So you get, I'll say, a little bit more erratic reinforcement plan. 
All right, so let's go ahead and clean this up. And we are going to clean it up kind of all at once. So instead of going into individual spans, we can go ahead and grab everything all at once. And I think I'm going to leave one. Yeah, let's leave the bottom one, just so we can see the difference between the cleaned up view and the non-cleaned up view. All right, now it is a support location, so everything can be left as set. We just want to, we want to just change the dimension there. And so my large column is actually 36 inches, so we'll just enter that, and then let's regenerate. All right, then we can do that again on this side. Oops, we don't need that one. And then in the middle, I'll do those before I regenerate again. All right, so when I look at this floor now, it's a, it's a much better layout, much cleaner, and I feel very comfortable that my cross-sections are going to come out well.